What is up YouTube? This is Trainer Connor and I am here with another Wi-Fi Pokemon battle video today. I know it's been a few weeks. Again, it's all about college, but guess what? I've got news for you. I am officially done with my first year of college. I'm still around my campus and everything, but since there are no classes available, I'll have activities doing, like, I would do all the activities, like, doing this, doing that, but in the free time that I have, I will be posting more videos. And I have a video here for you today, so definitely hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or if you're just tuning in and you're seeing what's going on, yeah, hit the like button, I appreciate it. So, this video here, this is my ninth Ultra Sunny Moon Battle video, facing off against Alice, one of my roommates, of course. You guys saw me about him before. Um, he's a, I want to say he's not really into competitive battling, of course I am, but I wanted to make this fair. So I let him use Legendaries, you see Lunala, you see Necrozma, and there's, of course, Zygarde Normal Form, and then we have up to as well. Um, my side here, we got Ferrothorn, Magnazone, Seismitoad, Mega Charizard X, and Archaeops, and Wigglytuff. So it's a great team, like a great team with synergy involved. And then we have Alice, of course, with the legendaries. This was a really good battle. I'm not lying to you guys. So definitely stick it all the way through through the whole video. I would appreciate it because this was an awesome match. I cannot agree any more than that. Like, this is top-notch good content. So definitely enjoy this. So here we go. We're going to start the match. So Alice, oh boy. I was not sure what I was going to expect, because I, I know I battled him before, but sometimes he likes to change up his strategy with the same Pokemon that he uses. I'm going to start out with Ferrothorn. So on the first turn, he just goes straight for the Moongeist beam. I know I can live it based off my HP investment. Yeah, see, I barely take any damage. I could have gone for Stealth Rocks on turn 1, but I chose to Paralyze. The Lunala. I know he has Shadow Shield, so I don't really want to damage him right now. I expected him to switch. Had I went for another Thunder Wave, that would have been awesome, but that is neither here nor there. I do put up a layer of spikes. Here I was thinking he could over predict, but he just goes for the attacking move, and of course, Fire Fang is going to take me out. I was really hoping he would over predict, because the switch in was pretty obvious, but. I guess we get some Iron Barbs damage onto him, so it's not too terrible, but at the same time, it's like, man, I would appreciate it if you over predict. I would love to have Ferrothorn later on, but that is not going to happen in this battle. So I go for the Charge Beam, hoping for a nice boost from Wigglytuff. That does not happen. And this is where we begin a little stall war between UC and Seismitoad. Seismitoad here is pretty bulky. He also has Stealth Rocks, so I have a few Pokemon that can set up entry hazards like we do see happen here. And the way I said that, that was weird, but okay. Um, yeah, so Seismitoad does get up the Stealth Rocks. That's perfect. Now here, I go for Knockoff as my opponent uses Yuan again. And it's funny because the CPUs, if you are in the battle tree or whatever, and they use Yuan, they do it twice to you. But my opponent thinks he can swap, I can swap out and get another Pokemon to sleep. I don't know if he knows the rule for the sleeping uh, part of the game. Like when you put two Pokemon to sleep, that is illegal in a battle. So I wanted to at least let him figure that out himself, because, like, if I told him, he would probably change up his strategy, but there's really no point in doing that, but, um, yeah, so, Seismico, you're still sleeping, he is taking a little bit of damage, I'm really questioning my opponent here, going for the extra sensory, when he has Psychic, I don't know, it's a little confusing, I mean, it's doing damage, and if I keep sleeping like this, he could potentially kick me out, 
that would be quite terrible at this point, but um, we actually do wake up here and go for another knockoff. I don't think he has an item, which is okay by me. He told me before the battle that he didn't have many items. That is okay. I just want to keep using knockoff because knockoff is a pretty good option against a psychic type. So realizing he's going to use another extra sensory or a psychic, whoever he uses, I know he's going to use a psychic type move. Now it's the time to use Magnazone. I know he's going to switch out and go into the silly roar here. I really like the entry hazards doing some work here. I go for a flash cannon and from that damage or from the HP investment that he had there, you know, from switching in and, and all that, I know, I know a flash cannon will take out Incineroar. Perfect. So here is Zygarde, who takes a little bit of damage as well from the energy hazards. I have to switch out going to Archaeops because the Land's Wrath or an Earthquake, Thousand Arrows, whatever he has, in this case, it's going to be the Land's Wrath. It's not going to do anything to Archaeops. And this particular Archaeops is a little bit different from like the usual set that you uh, see in previous generations. Um, this is pretty bad. I don't think I get a chance to use Archaeops the way I want to because he goes for the Dragon Breath and it's like, yeah, he has that. It's pretty weak, but the plus side is you get to paralyze me with a Dragon Breath and that is not cool because then he'll be outspeeding me. It's not really fun. Um, he goes for another Dragon Breath, and I am going to lose against Zygarde. So, uh, I'm sorry, Archaeops, you do have a, you had a Citrus Berry, because, um, I had that item for a reason, because your defeatist ability just comes to bite you later on, we got low HP there, but, oh well. So we do lose Archaeops, that is unfortunate. I go back into Seismico, who is actually proving his worth in this in this video, which is pretty awesome. Um, I go for Scald here against Necrozma, and we burn Necrozma, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. I don't know if he has any physical attacking moves, but he is going to take a little bit of residual damage every single turn. So, yes, I know, Seismic Toad, you're going down, but you did awesome in this video. I want to give Wigglytuff another shot here because um, I do have three Pokemon remaining at this point. I want to see if I can use Wigglytuff right. I go for a Shadow Ball here, and it is super effective. I can easily finish off in Charisma. Pretty sweet, so we do end up using... Uh, you, um, no, not UC, um, I'm trying to say Wigglytuff, but we just see UC coming in, and I do have Shadow Ball, but I wanted to see if he's going to do anything weird or something. I thought a Dazzling Gleam would take him out there, but it just doesn't work, so my bad, I end up just letting Wigglytuff go down, basically, because, I mean, you know, a faster Pokemon that my opponent will have here, like Zygarde, for example, he's gonna, he's going to outspeed me regardless. So, uh, that is unfortunate. But we do use Wiggly Tough after all, so that's great. He goes for a, a Land's Wrath. Oh my goodness, that is overkill in my opinion. We have 8 HP left. Man. Alright, so guess what? We're gonna use Charizard S in this video, guys. I haven't used him in a while, so now we can use him. I think the last time I used Berlinator was back when I did the ILL, which was one of those Pokemon leagues I was part of back in the day. That was pretty fun. Um, we use Dragon Claw against the Zygarde, and we take him out. So now here is the legendary that we have to take care of, Lunala. Of course, Lunala is part of the Sun and Moon games, but... Um, this is crucial because I only have one, one other Pokemon, that is Magnezone. He got paralyzed there. I'm really curious why he switched out there because if I went for another Dragon Claw, that would have demolished the Noivern. But he uses, or I mean, Burlinator uses Fire Punch. I thought I could just like wipe out Lanala with that move, but nope, it's no issue. I can just go for a Dragon Claw and finish him off there. And this is his last Pokemon, I believe. Well, no, uh, look at all that damage. So we're going to use... Okay, so what happens here, guys? I know I could have just finished off Winala. 
I wanted to be nice to my opponent because obviously I'm going to win this video or win this battle rather. Win this battle video if that makes a lot more sense. I don't know. But um I kinda want him to use a Z power move against me. I thought I could live this for some super reason as well, but like this is a very powerful attack. Um the plus side is that I have in this section of the video is that I still have Magnus Zone. He can't really do much to Magnus Zone. That's what I'm saying. So I'm sorry, Berlinator S. I am I'm pretty sorry. I mean look at that. That's a powerful attack. Why do I do that? I don't know. I kinda do this for a reason. I know I did it on purpose, but like, man, that's a lot of damage. But uh, anyway, with that said, Magnus Zone on speed Lunala because of course Lunala is Paralyzed, and we just go for a Thunderbolt, choice specs, and we finish off our opponent. So even though Burninator X went down right there, and I misclicked with the Dragon Dance, even though that was intentional, um, we still won the match. So that was a great battle. Thank you, Alice. And I don't know if I have other matches coming out anytime soon. I'll do my best to get something out later this week. Um, if not, then just stay tuned and watch some older videos if you want to or whatever. Um, I'll do my best to get something out for you guys. Alright, you guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you next time. Alright, goodbye, guys.